to the third day of the Moodle Mood for 2013. And if you were in the other session, you probably heard me uh, talk about time. And um, but the next session was going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I mentioned that Vance doesn't like when I do that. So Vance, um, here we are, and we're all here. People will be coming in because the other session uh, just finished um, at the nick of time. Just want to remind you that you can get a free membership on Wizda. I'm cute. And um, here's a collage of the participants that I showed before. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone for volunteering to present in this year 2013 MMVC 13. And I'm looking forward to your presentations next year. So Vance. Uh, Vance and I finally met after many years uh, in um, at a TESOL. I forget which one. I think it was in New Orleans. Yeah, it was in New Orleans. So it was really a pleasure to meet um, people actually in general that, um, that you only know online. So we are real people, even though um, we are also online. So Vance is a teacher of English to speakers of other languages. He's been active, very, very active in helping educators, other English teachers around the globe. And we are all very, very grateful to Vance. And this gives me an opportunity to say thank you to Vance for doing so much uh, for English teachers and Specifically for me, because I was very lonely until uh, I met the webhead that Vans had founded. And that's when I felt that I wasn't alone online, because I was the only teacher using technology. So um, he has been active in computer-assisted language learning, what now, now, sorry, which is now called small social media-assisted language learning. Uh, for a few decades, he also coordinates the uh, Personal Learning or Professional Learning Network Community of Practice webheads in action and has organized a weekly series. And this is amazing. And I encourage all of you to uh, be part of it it's every Sunday. I believe it's at this time. I don't know. Maybe it was already. Uh, Learning Together. It's on PB Works. Uh, it's been going on since 2010. Uh, he also has an amazing website that is uh, it's called Advanced Education. God, I thought it was .com, but it's in PB Works. Vance is passionate about learning from colleagues. And, you know, we, we learn so much from Vance as he learns maybe from others, but uh, Vance provides a lot of uh, very relaxing, uh, communicative kind of uh, collaboration that I really enjoy through building and facilitating spaces where everyone learns, and they do. Everyone learns with Vance around. So uh, with that, let me just bring up your presentation. And um, it really does uh, feel wonderful to have you at the annual, third annual, actually, Moodle Loop. So I'm going to uh, make sure that this is recorded. Uh, by the way, I'm recording this and adding it to YouTube, but I'm removing the chat. I'm using another computer for the chat, and I'm doing this because not everybody wants their, you know, their comments made public or their names uh, viewed. So that's why I am trying to do the right thing here and remove the chat. Hello, Van. Hello. How's my audio? I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I didn't enjoy mine. Can you hear me okay? Uh, it's a bit low. I don't know. Maybe it's my... Uh, oh, yeah, my volume is low. Yeah, go ahead. Mine was kind of low. Go ahead. Should be fine. Okay. How about the rest of you? Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to mute my mic okay. and let you go on. Oh, goodness, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I like to talk to people, but uh, with people, I should say. So, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I'm in the background. 
I'm going to go into the other computer so I can chat there. Don't worry, I'll be chatting away, as always. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I actually, I did, I'm now in Al Ain, United Arab Emirates. I moved from Abu Dhabi. I did this last weekend. Uh, this is the, my new apartment here. Which, well, I'm not going to turn this uh, too much, but uh, it's full of boxes and things that aren't placed. There's no pictures on the walls. And, Anyway, I just got here. And amazingly, this is really the amazing thing, there was internet on in the apartment. Uh, the, the last occupant left kind of suddenly, and he left his internet connected. And I, all I had to do was take my old router and replace his with it, and I've had internet for the ever since I got here. So uh, we're very fortunate. Otherwise, I'd be scrounging for for bandwidth somewhere. I found out today that I couldn't have done that at the Alline Men's College Library. It closes at 5 o'clock because the students haven't started at that place. So anyway, well, here we are. So, uh, and I think because of all this uh, moving last weekend and a lot going on and, you know, that's a, a move from one city to another in the United Arab Emirates. Um, I, I must have spaced on some things. So, uh, first, first of all, I didn't, I wasn't able to find Nellie's uh, presentation. Uh, I, I just couldn't find it. So, and I was skyping you, Nellie. So couldn't. Anyway, I'm sure you were very busy with what you were doing. Um, I really appreciate the very nice uh, introduction Nellie gave to me. I, I think you could turn that around and put Nellie Deutsch in all of those. Categories we learned so much from her. She's been active, passionate about this for such a long time. So uh, it, I think. Um, well, actually, I, I, I suppose I'm not sure where we ran across each other. <laughs> and she's been she's just getting back from Paraguay. So um, all of us are. I think it's more relaxing for us to be online, meeting online in our homes, uh, rather than jetting around to Paraguay, uh, other locations. Uh, that can be stressful. Yes, of course. Well, I do too. I love meeting people. Uh, I'm so glad. I guess if you look at the people in this room, I don't know. I've known them for a long time. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Anna Christina Pratas lives here in Alain. Um, I'm just looking down the list. Apart from Nelly, I guess there's nobody I've really met in person uh, who is here that I can see, just scrolling down the list. But I, I have known uh, probably half of these people in an online capacity for some time. And so there's a little, in the slideshow, if we get to it, there's a history of what we've been doing. Um, so let's see, can I advance the slides? I think so. There's a little play button here. Let me just see if that works. I'll go. No, I can do that. So, oh, you did um, that. Lance, can you maybe move the, spe the, uh, you know, the speaker a little bit, the microphone a little bit closer, a little bit higher up? It seems okay. to go into your beard there. Yeah, that's perfect. Is that better? OK. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, you never know. Actually, I I just did a sound check uh, using the wizard here, and it seemed okay, but it's hard to tell. Um, so anyway, um, I've got some artifacts online because, as, as you mentioned, I've been doing this since 2010. We've well, 2010 is where learning together, where I got the idea for learning together. But uh, this is started with webheads actually in 1998 when we. Uh, started recording our sessions on webhead so we have a, a history going way back um, we at some point did these uh, webheads and action online convergences which were kind of what you're doing now Nelly constantly we, we did them once every two years it was about as, as much as we could take and uh, and and to answer Maria's question in the chat um, yes we do have a presence in second life uh, Often, well, this has been uh, in large part to edunation, 
which is, was started by Gavin Dudney some time ago and then has been uh, taken over by Heike Philp. And uh, she has, uh, it's actually all our community that sort of um, maintains these presences. And I've often said that if you, if what, you know what you're doing is worthwhile if you leave and other people continue doing that. Uh, so, um, you know, the Webhead seems to be something at least that that has a lot of people doing it, you know, and uh, people seem to be happy doing that. So I'm quite happy when other people do things and it's not just me having to push all the buttons. In fact, it, well, as you said, you know, we learn from each other and that's, that's what I'm here to learn. Uh, Stephen Downs was once asked why he in the first book that he and Dave Cormier and uh, George Siemens uh, did, he was asked why. Why would he teach to 2,000 people when he could teach a class of 20? And why was he going to the trouble? Uh, he said, because I'll learn from it. And I think that's, um, that's why we do these things. So in any event, this slide that you're looking at, uh, the, one of the first presentations I gave on learning together itself was at TESOL Philadelphia. And um, that slideshow that you're looking at is really the one here with just a few things changed. But there is a prose version of uh, what we do with learning together. That's the presentation that I did at TESOL. I actually wrote it up. So you can read about that if you want. Uh, there is an MP3 learning together, one of our a learning together event. I did a kind of a rehearsal for the presentation and so recorded that. And then um, I put an article, oh I did this for a TESOL Arabia conference uh, in 2012 last year. And um, they uh, put that paper, uh, the one in prose, the second bullet point, they put, we put that into its proceeds. And of course I put the uh, I put it online somewhere because the proceeds aren't online, but you can read the, my part of it. So those are just some things. Uh, oh, and if you go to the, um, the slide share, which one is that's the first link. If you go there, you, you'll find something very similar to this. And uh, you'll, you can get those links, hyperlinks there. So I try to do everything I do. I try to, you know, everything I do professionally anyway. I try to uh, leave an online presence and leave ways that uh, while I might be talking uh, to people, you know, there are recordings, there are things in many modalities that you can uh, go and refer to. So uh, basically, um, another thing that Stephen Downs once said was that uh, a teacher models and demonstrates and a student practices and reflects. That was his definition of a teacher and a student. He made that distinction the first time I heard it at uh, you know, one of the Webheads in Action Online Convergences when he came online and gave us a little talk. I think he repeated it actually in the talk he gave with Nelly. Um, he's been, um, He's, that, that, has, that has recurred many times. I think it's just a really nice definition of a teacher and a learner. A teacher, someone who models and demonstrates, and a student, someone who practices and reflects. And what I really like about that is, um, in conjunction with uh, Dave Warlick's idea of the master, of a teacher being a master learner. Um, and I once said at a plenary I gave that there's no such thing as an English teacher. It's not something you can really teach. The language has to be learned. So you can do training as opposed to teaching, but um, training is uh, something that you have discrete steps and you can lead people down them. You can train people to uh, take a TOEFL test or a, an IELTS test or you can train people to um, answer the quizzes that you give to them at the end of the term, but to really learn the language, someone has to master that. And language teachers tend to be language learners as well. So if you think about how your learning or language informs your teaching, 
what you're doing is you're developing skills to be a teacher and uh, sorry to be a learner you're developing skills to be a learner which you're then using in your teaching and so you're learning how to learn a language and you're trying to uh, give that to your student and also to other teachers whom you train so we're basically always learning that is we're practicing and reflecting on learning um, a lot of us keep blogs um, you know we're we're learning right now, and some of us might go home and practice a little of what we learn, especially with Moodle. You're learning a lot about Moodle, and that will be easy to practice. And then uh, as you uh, show this to other people, you're modeling, demonstrating. We're modeling now. We're modeling how to learn. Nellie is doing this all the time. She's constantly modeling how you can set up learning environments for people and how people can learn from them. So this is basically what learning together is about. It's about being the best teacher you possibly can be by becoming a master learner. And so it's percolating, modeling, demonstrating, practicing, and reflecting through uh, th these components of being a teacher and a student all blend together to be a master learner or a master teacher, if you like. So in this slide, there are some links to as to where learning together is, um, we basically, I suppose you could find everything in the, uh, the fourth link on that page, learningtogether.net. That's a, um, I'm missing some of the chat incidentally, it's scrolling off. Okay. So anyway, I was going back and read. Sorry for the pause. Okay, so, um, Anyway, at learningtogether.net slash about, you can find these other links. Uh, there's an about tab in a WordPress blog, or at least in the template that I use. And so if you click on the about tab, you can see, you can find all these links. So learningtogether.net is your central source for uh, finding these other links. And basically, our wiki uh, has the main page, that's the first link, and it has upcoming events, which are, there's a place you can click on the first page and go to the upcoming events. So you'll find, if you go there, that this one is listed. And we also have an archives, which is basically a bulleted list of all the presentations we've done since 2010. Now, what, uh, what we're doing is we're putting on an online conference, a very intensive online conference, like the Webheads in Action online conferences we used to give, or the one that Nellie is doing now, going over three days. I'm not sure how many presentations a day, I didn't really count them, but let's say 20 a day, about 60 uh, for the whole uh, time. So that's, uh, in one conference, what we're doing with Learning Together is we're putting those 60 sessions once a week throughout the year. So it's a little easier pace, and it doesn't. Um, it's, it's it's kind of an event that people can come to, um, you know, without necessarily having to know what is going on. You can just go to the wiki and you can see what's happening. Uh, it takes place at different times, um, that is, but it's, it's almost always about this time. I purposely this is a learning together event, by the way. Uh, it's listed on our wiki as the thing that we're doing this week, and I try wherever possible to blend with other communities. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about more about those in a moment. Uh, one of them is mentioned right at the bottom. Uh, there's a network connection. Uh, the last thing that's mentioned here is TA EdTech, which is the local uh, TESOL Arabia affiliate, TESOL affiliate that I've been trying to, we've, I've been posting on their Ning, but I'm not getting a lot of interaction from them, although Christina is uh, somebody who's here from the UAE, so we're fans of one another. Um, this is what the planning wiki looks like, so if you go there, and, and incidentally, it is a wiki, which means that anybody can join it. Now, due to spam issues, I can't just let everybody be a writer, even if I don't know them, because I've had enough experience with spammers to know that these people can be a pain. A robot is the last thing you want mucking about with your wiki. So if you want to join the wiki, you can. You can just click on join, and I will let you into the wiki. 
if I know who you are, I'll let you in as a rider. And if I don't know who you are, though, uh, I will um, have to, I'll let you in as a reader. But certainly, if uh, if you want to present, this is what we do. We try to get people to uh, to sign up at the wiki. Uh, I do quite a lot of behind the scenes trying to get people to sign up. Um, but anyway, uh, if you go to learningtogether.pbworks.com, you'll see this page. You can click on the our next scheduled event. You can see there's a sidebar there which shows you things like the archives where you can see a list of all the, the speakers. Those links in the archives go to the learningtogether.net um, uh, that's a blog. But what I do is when people sign up the planning wiki, we call it a planning wiki because anybody can sign up and propose a session. Those people will develop their session. They'll be, become members of the space. Either I will post uh, uh, the information about their event or I'm quite happy if they do it and often they do. So um, okay uh, looking at William's question and not quite understanding that. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't me. <laughs> okay so uh, when you click on the upcoming events, you see something like this. Um, our activity varies quite a bit. We've just come back from the summer. We had a lot of presentations uh, right before we left in June uh, into July. Uh, in fact, actually, we always have a presentation of some kind. Um, since 2010, we've had presentations. Often, we've had three or four lined up, sometimes even half a dozen or more. Uh, we're getting in uh, toward the end of the year, or at the beginning of next, we're going to have the EVO sessions, Electronic Village Online. And that time of year becomes very busy. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to get people from WorldCal to uh, give some of their presentations. I'm sort of focusing on them because they made such interesting presentations and it's in a conference that doesn't happen all that often, and I missed it. Uh, uh, my, my, my proposal, proposal got, got lost in the internet, but anyway. Uh, but in any event, so I, I'm quite interested in that. I've gone to a couple of world calls already, and I know that's a really great conference. And um, I know a lot of the people, and I would, I'd like to get their presentations uh, to be piled up at the site. So eventually, I think, uh, we're going to see more presentations there in the near term. And then in the longer term, as we come into the EVO sessions, uh, we'll be having more presentations associated with that. So it always gets pretty busy uh, at the first of the year. And as I, somebody is always ready to present. Sorry, Vance, can you explain a little bit about the EVO since it's coming up? Sure. Well, time yeah. flies. Well, uh, my session is entitled Learning Together About Everything. Uh, I kind of got that idea, I suppose, from one of the Bill Bryson books, uh, History of Everything. Uh, I sort of mean it in that way. But, you know, this is really our reality is nowadays, is that you can learn anything. You don't really have to uh, wait for something to come up. You can, well, what I mean is, um, sessions like ours present things to you, but you can actually go out and learn what you want to. You know, you can, there's so much to choose from that you can go into, uh, MOOC sessions, and you can learn, you know, scripting. You can learn. Uh, there's one on data mining coming up. Um, there's some really interesting MOOCs, uh, but and a lot of people have Moodles too. Moodle is another source of MOOCs, and Moodle MOOC is uh, another example. So there's so much you can learn. But EVO, Electronic Village Online, is a, a recurring uh, set, of set of sessions, sessions that always, always takes place in January and February. February. When, when I say always, I mean since 2001, I think is when they started. Uh, it, it actually comes from um, the TESOL conferences. Uh, I was the first chair of the Cal interest section, computer system language learning interest section at TESOL. And uh, I was, as the first chair, I was instrumental in getting 
uh, computers actually brought into the conference and set up in a room, and I would, and I would arrange presentations uh, that take place there, and people would come with their software, put them on the computers, and um, then we would um, sometimes share, swap. It got pretty elaborate after the first couple of years. It was very informal at first. We used a lot of sneaker net at the time, uh, staying up late at night. The Cal intersection had a lot of young people who would play, keep our guitars under the computers and we'd bring them out at night. But we were basically in that room all the time. But nowadays it's become more institutional at TESOL and there is a room that is actually part of the planning that gets put up and it's called the Electronic Village, this room that is set up at every TESOL conference. So Electronic Village Online is somebody's idea to take the concept and bring it forward uh, before the event so that um, we, we, we start, start in, actually, actually we start, we get started uh, now. now. We're, We're starting, starting for, for the next, uh, um, the next, next sessions. sessions. We're, We're starting, starting now by getting proposals for moderators. So, so anybody who wants to set up a session and sign up for it right, right now, propose it. And um, soon, in October perhaps, we'll, have, we'll start training moderators. There's a lot of quality control here. Um, the, um, the sessions tend to be really good because they're well vetted and the moderators either come up through the culture of the people who, are, who have been doing this for some time or they're introduced to the culture through the training sessions, which are basically modeling sessions. And by December, the moderators who go through the training have to actually come up with a uh, an actual course online that looks good and that, that gets critical uh, feedback from the coordinators. I'm one of the coordinators. There are about a half a dozen of us or eight of us, I think. And um, so we'd, sometimes we'll be very uh, strong in our critique. For example, really, you need to fix this if you're going to do the session, or maybe if you don't have time for it, maybe you could do this the next Year. But, but we, we don't, don't do a lot of that. that. Most people um, um, will put, put their, their sessions, sessions up. up. Uh, you know, well, anyway, they get their sessions presentable. So uh, basically, the, the quality is maintained through this, uh, this vetting process. And in January, it starts. It's open. Then a call for participation goes out. It's open to uh, participants. Anyone can join. Some of the sessions have a 1,000 people in them. Uh, mine tend to have double digits, but um, you know there there could be a hundred. There's always one called becoming a webhead, which uh, has, has been put on by people who were in the webheads um, who started out. And because in 2002, webheads actually webheads in action began as an EVO session. That's how it began. So uh, to find out more about EVO, you can go to evosessions.pbworks.com. So evosessions is one word, .pbworks.com. And that will tell you, um, you know, how you can join that. So that's a pretty cool event. Um, happens every year. And it's, uh, I think, one of the best training events on the session. Is Maria's question, I might be able to Maybe someone else could type that. Could someone else type uh, evo sessions dot pbworks dot com. Pb works. Pb stands for peanut butter. Pb is pb works is a wiki. Um, I can remember. What, yeah, that's it. Right. Thank you, Maria. Okay. So anyway, yeah, go there and. Uh, uh, check, check that out. out. So, so learning, learning together, together has a lot to do with that. That's one of the communities. I mentioned two communities so far. There's TESOL Arabia, uh, my local one here, and um, also uh, the PB Works Sessions. So um, what I'm showing the slide here, this is, there's an index that it looks like that. So every session that we have has a link to it. That link is to the 
uh, blog where we have uh, recordings. And the recordings, uh, if we can at all get a, an MP3, we do. We can get MP3s from YouTube. I can, uh, uh, I use uh, video anywhere. I, I can give you the, I, I use a really neat piece of software to make MP3s from YouTube. It's called Any Video Converter. Uh, any video converter. So if you Google video conversion and find any video converter, that's the name of the product, that will render MP3s from YouTube videos. And it also will make a copy on your computer in a format that you prefer, MP4 for example, of a YouTube video. So if you're teaching in a situation where you uh, need to circumvent uh, internet blockages or whatever, you can get copies of videos on your computer or on your flash drive or whatever. And in my case, I, I make, uh, when, when Nelly puts this event up in YouTube or when we do a hangout, we get a YouTube recording from it, I have the link to the recording at the blog and also the downloadable MP3. And or we also use Illuminate. Uh, Illuminate is a grant. It's on grant granted to us by a, a nice outfit called uh, Learning Times, LearningTimes.com, and we're going to come to them in a minute. But basically, here's uh, one example of a blog post. You can see at the top of the post that there's a, a play button. You can play the MP3. We this is this is from a hangout. Um, and uh, we, we rendered the MP3, you, and, and you can also download it if you're on a PC. You can right-click on that download link, and you can save that on your computer. I think you can also do it on a Mac, though it, it's not totally intuitive. Um, okay, so that's what the archive looks like, that WordPress blog. Um, incidentally, I started that blog in Posturus and the victim of uh, Posturus' demise, but I managed to get it all ported over into WordPress. Oh, it was pretty straightforward, but not totally straightforward. So I do take some of the credit. It wasn't all robots. So this is, a, uh, this is the local TESOL Arabia EdTech Ning, where we announce our event. And um, also, well, for a time we were making connections with the call interest section. Um, these uh, connections haven't been so productive. Actually, uh, I think the cultures in call interest section and in TESOL Arabia are just a little bit different from learning together. But we're getting more traction with um, a group called TIL, uh, Teachers. Uh, what does it stand for? Anyway, basically it's uh, instructional technology in language learning and uh, run by Benjamin Stewart. Yes, I forget his name. And um, he occasionally, uh, he runs the TIL community and sometimes we collaborate. He, when I was on leave just recently, he did a session for us. And another um, Another session I'm having, in fact, actually, I could probably, let's see, uh, Till is a Google community. Uh, let's see, my browser is not, uh, let's see, here's another uh, group that we've been, TESOL Toronto has also been uh, uh, collaborating with us. I'm just grabbing links, I'm going to try to put them in the text chat here. So this is a link to uh, TESOL Toronto. Um, Tyson Seaburn is, uh, has uh, asked for permission to use Illuminate for some of his um, sessions and when he does them, he's only done two so far, but basically um, you know, what, what I'm saying here is we're welcoming uh, communities, we're trying to work with other communities so that we're all learning together makes a big community. And of course, Nelly's many communities are other uh, you know, other ways that we can uh, tie in with other communities. I mentioned Heike also, her virtual roundtable events, which have turned out to be really 
nice fixtures on the online conference um, um, scene. And also she's got one coming up, an SL Languages Conference, Second Life Languages Conference. So uh, these, we tend to try to learn together from these events as well. So we, we try to tie into, um, you know, to other communities. And here on this slide, this explains our funding. We have no funding. That's easily explained. <laughs> Uh, there's actually a good reason for it, though. If you read the blog post, uh, which is about cognitive surplus, which is a book by Clay Shirky, uh, Clay Shirky kind of explained to me when I read the book why we do these things. And he uses other examples. He's very good at explaining things about the Internet, um, why people do things online, how they work online. Uh, but basically, uh, if you want to read that post, you can see that there is a very good reason why when we do things for free, once you've introduced money into a situation, you change it. So it's complicated how that happens, but um, the DC experiments were just a, a psychological experiment where DC got students to work on creating shapes from these soma blocks and while uh, he left he left them uh, during an experimental part to do things in his office and when he he just invited them in to be part of the experiment they would continue working on the blocks during the break but then once he started paying them because he started doing that too then they would not work on the blocks, blocks during the break and uh, also, um, uh, Lawrence Lessig has a really good book on uh, uh, Remix, called Remix, and um, he also explains how there is an economy that works. You, you can mess up, like, for example, um, I think it might have been Kodak that had a um, one of the first photo, online photo uh, storage spaces and they, uh, by introducing a payment system, they messed it up, whereas the, the free ones just seem to go on forever. So uh, anyhow, that's just some rationale that I don't want to take a lot of time to explain right now. But I mentioned Learning Times. Learning Times has, has uh, runs a, maintains a, a, an Illuminate instantiation, I should say. I don't know yeah, if they have their own server. They, they probably do. They, but anyway, yeah, I'm sure they do. Uh, but it, but uh, basically, they have let us use Illuminate to broadcast our sessions. That's one reason we don't have, we don't require funding. If we had to pay for Illuminate, um, we would, you know, well, that would be a, something we would need money for. But uh, Learning Times has just been they make their money using Illuminate to put on webinars, which they set up for people. And, um, and well, WizIQ is also another option. Um, so there are, there are many free places that you can go if that's what you want. That's not saying that that's the only way to go, but it just happens to be uh, a way that I've been pushing. I'm sort of happy that things go on for free. Uh, and I realize that, I mean, I work as an educator. I, I get a paycheck. Um, I know people have to make money. And they basically have to add value to what you do. If you add value, you should get uh, paid for that. There's a cat in the background. Hi, cat. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, I didn't understand oh, William's question. Where is that on EVO? Um, Illuminate is, EVO is actually using it. They're using this, uh, the Webhead's room. It's a, we, a Webhead's uh, chat room, but it's free for everyone to use, and it's underused. So that's why how Tyson Seaburn got a hold of it for uh, Tessel Toronto. He just asked if he could use it, and we said, yeah, sure, it's free. I mean, you know, let's use it. <laughs> it's great, you know. To get more people into it. Okay. okay.
Ah, okay. So Nelly says, yes. yes. Well, actually, uh, Nelly, EVO will probably be using with IQ in 2014. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're using whatever we can. Uh, we're trying, we're not sticking to just one thing. We're just using whatever works. Uh, for example, some people like Hangout. I like Hangout quite a lot. It's one of my favorite environments. And um, so I use the Hangout when I can, but some people prefer uh, Illuminate and others prefer WizIQ. And there are even other, some people don't like, um, or Adobe. Adobe is another one. Uh, Hypey uses that to great effect. So uh, it depends sometimes on what system you have, as Nelly points out, if you're on a Mac or a PC. Uh, so apparently with IQ is friendly for Mac. And it certainly has improved over the, over the times. And, and Nelly is a great modeler and demonstrator of how to use with IQ and Moodle to excellent effect. So we all learn from her and from each other about that. But uh, uh, Hangout has been very productive. I, I like Hangout quite a lot. Uh, what we can do with Hangouts, uh, I got this uh, technique from Jeff Lee Bow, but then it turns out that you know, the little known secret is that when you uh, start a Hangout, you get a URL for it from YouTube right away. Now, if you embed that URL in a website, so this is a secret now, so don't tell anybody. This is just between us. But if you embed that URL in a website, the embed will play the stream while you are in the Hangout. Now, if you put that at a website where you can invite people to view it, you'll get a play button there. When they play, when they click on the play button, they can see the stream. You can then also add a text chat. We've been using the Ethernet clones, so you could have a web page with an embedded text chat and the embedded uh, YouTube video stream and have more than the 10 people uh, who are allowed in a Hangout actually being able to listen to the session and to interact because they can all interact in the, in the YouTube pad. So that's been very productive to set up a Hangout and then make sure there's an embed somewhere in case it fills up with more than 10 people because there's nothing more frustrating than having a, than going to a hangout and finding that you're the eleventh man standing, as it were, and uh, you can't get in. So anyhow, it's nice to know that you can actually set them up so they can be streamed. So uh, as I see, we're sort of coming toward the end of the hour, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on. I've already mentioned that uh, Webhead started. Actually, we started recording in 1998. Uh, there was uh, Dave Wynette, who's still with us, uh, still comes online. Question from Guadalupe. You do not have to pay for a Hangout. Uh, it's a Google product, so uh, it, it works really well. No, you don't have to pay. Uh, you have to, it, it's one of the many Google services for educators. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes, Nelly says only 10 people can be there. That's true. And that's why I just divulged the secret of the stream. So if you just embed this, when you start the Hangout, you get the stream, you get the embed code, and you embed that in a blog or wiki or something. And then uh, people can go there and listen to the Hangout, even if there are more than 10 people actually in the Hangout. If it's, once there are 10 people in the Hangout. And you can also manage that so you can, Jeff Lebeau is an expert at that. Uh, the EVO sessions usually have a hangout, and you can uh, um, uh, yeah, Jeff revolves people in and out as they're getting over 10. I was just reading Nelly's question, but you can get streaming and chat. What did you mean by that? Okay, anyway, I was hoping Nelly would jump in and explain that. You can, you know. You have the power. Okay, so anyhow, um, this little history lesson, uh, you can get if you go, go to the prose version of which I put online. This is a nice little, uh, one thing I did in 1998 was this is the students who we were uh, edutaining at that time. And... Um, 
this will uh, this is before Facebook and before Moodle with its little avatars of people. We were getting people's pictures and putting them up at our Web1 web spaces and uh, getting people to get really enthusiastic about the community. It's one of the first communities of learners that operated in this way. So this this little uh, thing became background in, on some walls in Second Life. Uh, the, the picture you see right now is Webheads in Action. I mentioned that that started in 2002 as an EBO session, and these are some of the people who eventually joined that community that you see there. And Nellie's doing that too. Uh, it's such a great idea. Uh, put pictures of people up, all the presenters that you have, and it's just nice to have this kind of community. So, anyhow. Um, so, so basically, basically, I mentioned that Webheads in Action online convergences that we did actually in three years, 2005, 2007, and 2009, and boy, those were 72-hour marathon events with very little sleep. This is how I got the idea. I decided I just could not um, do one again in 2011. I sort of suggested to people that, anybody want to do this, you know, just say so. And I didn't get any so's, so. I didn't put one on, but by 2010, I had started, I had decided to do it one week at a time. So that's what learning together is. This is one of our first, uh, we did, it, it, learning together comes from a concept called speed geeking. The idea was to, a uh, speed geek is where, it, it's actually designed for a physical space. Uh, you, you might, might get a big hall somewhere and you put kiosks up and everybody gives a 10 minute presentation and the people in the room move around to the, the different presentations and I think this is, you, you have a certain amount of time to do your geek, your speed geek. So we uh, made something called speed lifing which is where we go to second life and we uh, spend 10 minutes or 15 in different participants' spaces. And so they took us, they just teleported, we teleported to one space after another. It was a neat little uh, concept. Uh, so anyway, our, our events, uh, we want you to join us, we want you to participate, we want you to present. Uh, all of you here, please uh, keep, help us keep this thing moving. And uh, we were doing it on Sundays Noon GMT was a traditional time from 1998 where webheads met and uh, conducted these classes. And then, of course, we started varying from noon. Uh, noon, uh, actually, the, what Jeff Lebeau calls a sweet spot, the sweet spot is this time, 1400 GMT. We're almost at 1500 GMT right now. Uh, that's a time when people in the west coast of the United States are almost waking up and the people in... Uh, Japan, let me think, they're, they're going to be a, getting on the midnight for them. But it's doable, so if you're anywhere but Hawaii, um, you can manage, you know, a little hard for Australians uh, to make such a late time. But anyway, we, we try to vary that. And the idea is that the presenter can decide on the time. And you can also decide on the day. Sunday or Monday uh, works well for me. Um, Anyway, you could also propose a Tuesday if you wanted. But basically, uh, we have Jeff LeBeau set up a webheadsinaction.org domain for us, uh, slap a Drupal on it, and we use that sometimes to embed our, uh, our Hangouts. And then I mentioned the grant that we have from, Lumi, uh, from uh, Learning Times, something I can't thank them enough for. Um, so yeah, basically, I guess that's the message. Uh, please join us. You can either write to me. Uh, my my name is Vance Stevens, and my Gmail is v a n c e s t e v at gmail dot com. So you can write me, and uh, or you can find me on Google Communities. Um, you could write and suggest a time for the sessions, or you can just join the wiki. Um, as I said, if you want to be a writer, you need to let me know who you are, or maybe I already know you. But if you just join the wiki, um, you can then 
I recognize you, I'll make you a writer. You can write in your own session. Some people do that. Not a lot of people do, but you're certainly welcome to. That's the idea. Ideally, uh, I could go away somewhere. It didn't really work this summer. I slipped away for a while. But, you know, we did have uh, Benjamin Stewart uh, came on and did a session for us, and he actually put up a wiki where uh, Google Doc where we could try to organize um, other sessions over the summer. Sometimes it works where other people will actually pick up the ball, and sometimes, well, we just hold it over a break. Mohammed, what link do you want us to write in the text box? Specify? I didn't know this. There is some way to take questions from people. Toward the end of what I'd like to do the program. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, Vance, I'd like um, the link to the program. He means uh, learning together, the link. Um, but Vance, can you add that? Can you join the? Uh, I think you joined already. Can you join the uh, the course area for the conference or conference area uh, course um, link that I've added, and then you can uh, add all the links and they'll stay there because with IQ is a SAS. It's on the cloud, and it and you know it just saves a lot of bandwidth for all of us if you can just store stuff there. Unless they go bankrupt, like uh, Posturist did. <laughs> well, no, I, I I agree with you. It's uh, well, actually, the 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 slideshow. I can just give you that right now. If you just go to uh, slideshow. And I'm wondering why you don't get a domain. You know, just just put everything on a domain. You can get a WordPress. Uh, what's it called? This they have a social. Well, they have others. I think um, what's his name? Alex Hayes has uh, something. I forget what it's called. Uh, Egglek or Legek or something. Legek or Egg. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Not a memorable one, unfortunately. Egglek. Well, I don't know. It's something like that. It's it's Eggleg or whatever. But it's like WordPress. And see, if you get your own domain. You're always, I mean, nobody's going to kick you out of anywhere. Well, I've got VanStevens.com. Like PBWorks. I worry about PBWorks because PBWorks may just be on their way out. And uh, you can quote me saying that ahead of time. Yeah, there's, there's the domain I'm worried forever. And, and I haven't done a lot with it. But as long as things are working, I'm sort of happy to sort of work on these messy palettes. Uh, but as you you know, I, I, I guess at some point I might need to consolidate, but um, well, that's good advice. And of course, um, you know the the way to go really. Oh, if you if you're uh, uh, is it who's the guy at Mar uh, William and Mary? Is it William? Uh, the guy who's what do you mean? You know, get your own domain, your, a domain of one's own. Who does that? I'd like to say Jim Groom, but I think Jim Groom is. It might be Jim Groom. Is it Jim Groom? You know, in, in his school, in his university, um, each student gets a domain, and they learn how to. That's great. They learn how to uh, set up their own servers, and you know, the idea is that you get control of all this stuff from as a student. So can you add that? You add that to the uh, the course feed because I would like that too. See, we can we can get a lot of information in there, and you can ask Vance questions. If you don't think of them now, you can think of them later. If you think of something, you know, feel free to use that. I I try to save my Moodle. I usually delete it after a while. You know, the the courses to save on bandwidth. But WizIQ is there for us, so why not? You know, take advantage of the servers. Did you, where, I'm looking at it. Where do you add it? You find your class and add it there. That must be what you go into course feed. Where, you know, you should have as soon as you click on it. If you look to the left, exactly, that's it. Course feed. Live and then you can start a discussion there, and and not just that. It's an active. Well, there's no editor right now. I'm trying to get them to get one. But you can add a link, and then it's hyperlinked automatically, so it's like a, uh, a sensitive area there okay. for links. Yeah, I see. Just add a link, and it'll sure. 
Yeah, yeah. that's good. good. All right. well, so I'd, I'd like to thank, thank you, Vance, Vance for volunteering to talk, talk and I know how busy you've been and, and, and I know it's not easy to move from one place to another, so physically, yeah. I think online it's a lot easier, right? Yeah, I wish I could just do it online. <laughs> I wish I had a job where I could just be in Abu Dhabi and be in the line, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. So I wish you all the best in your new home. And uh, I don't know if it's a new school or if you're still going to be traveling for a long time. So I, I hope life is going to be easier in any event. And um, see you online. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Okay, well, thanks for uh, setting up these events. This was Sunday, August 25th, 2013. Is that what you say? Yeah. And I want you to say. Oh, well, yeah. This has been a... Uh, Moodle Moot uh, co online conference uh, uh, for 2013 and also a learning together event for August 25th, 2013. And I always like to say the date because I really, it irritates me when I hear podcasts and people don't mention when they are, when they occurred and you don't really know what you're listening to. But uh, this is Vance Stevens signing out from Align in the United Arab Emirates. Thanks very much. Bye, and it's August 25th, 2013. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>